As a practice, it is not the norm, but it's not uncommon either. Look back to 1796 for a bit of epidemiological folklore. Edward Jenner makes his case for a smallpox vaccine by injecting both the vaccine and the deadly virus into an eight-year-old boy. It works. The vaccine proven almost overnight. Was it efficient or reckless? The answer is complicated. Just like the debates around every challenge trial that's happened since, typhoid, cholera, these volunteers, arms resting on those cups, they're filled with malaria-infected mosquitoes. And yes, they're being bitten. Even the fight against influenza has benefited from challenge trials. And in a global pandemic, scientists and ethicists are carefully, feverishly weighing the benefits of a faster vaccine against the risks of making people sick, possibly exposing them to long-term harm. But consider the inertia of urgency. A group called One Day Sooner, with 15 Nobel laureates and dozens of other prominent researchers, ethicists, and philosophers, has penned an open letter petitioning the U.S. government to begin preparations for challenge trials immediately. One of those signatories, Nir Eyal. He's a bioethicist at Rutgers and a supporter of large-scale trials happening as soon as possible. Okay, so let me start with the biggest question, what, what is the best argument you can make in favor of undertaking human challenge trials? There is enormous humanitarian gain from getting to a vaccine faster. Human challenge trials would expedite things a bit if everything went well in the regular conventional phase three trials that are going on right now. If everything doesn't go well, if specifically what happened in the UK in the spring recurs, namely that by the time the trial gets going, the bulk of community spread moves elsewhere to a different location and they need to reboot and restart elsewhere, which is what they did. That's why they started in Brazil and the US and in South Africa. Then human trial trials really save many months and that's very significant. Right, because the point you're making there is that when you enter phase three clinical trials and you vaccinate a whole number of people, you're relying on them getting sick or being exposed to the virus naturally in their own environment. Exactly. In the human challenge trials, there is the certainty that people will be exposed. That's why you need far, far fewer volunteers. That's why you know that you will get results once you start very soon thereafter. So, so tell me, how do these trials actually work? I mean, what do they look like? How, how do you deliberately infect someone with the coronavirus? There are different techniques for doing that. Usually they use nasal inoculation, basically a swab with the virus culture up a person's nose. It's not very painful or invasive. Um, you, before you do that, you randomize people to people who would get the vaccine and people who will get control. And what you're looking for, just like in conventional trials, to see differences between the two arms, the people who got the vaccine and the people who got the controls. Only in a challenge trial, you know that people will have been exposed to the virus. You got a very small group of volunteers. Um, you need to select them so that it will be people with very low risk for any adverse results from the infection um, to expose themselves to the virus. And very soon thereafter, you have results and you can save literally thousands of lives every day if we end this pandemic um, um, that one day sooner. I, I understand the benefits, I think, but, but help me understand the risks involved, as, as, as you mentioned them, because, I mean, what if you get someone not just sick, but seriously sick? I mean, we, we know that even young people who are more resilient to the virus, they can be hospitalized, they can require intensive care, and they can die. Yeah, that is absolutely true. It could happen in this trial. It's also something that could happen in the conventional trials. Uh, there would be more deaths actually um, in the conventional trial simply because it's for 30,000 people, including many who are old and at high risk for uh, complications following coronavirus infection. And for a child trial, we would always select only people who are very young, adults who can give high quality informed consent, they're not children, but um, who are at very low risk. They don't have any concomitant conditions that make them likelier to suffer complications. We are now in pandemic. We are facing thousands of deaths directly every day from COVID. And I'm not even going into the thousands and thousands of deaths from 
the cancer you know elective services that are currently avoided the what the UN calls famines of biblical dimensions that are expected around the world because of economic strife I don't love the risks I would have preferred it if this was without risks but risks exist risk exists by the way in the toxicity trials that the vaccine candidates we're currently testing have already undergone medical trials are care risks they're not part of the care of the participant they're something we do to advance global health and in this case it's perfectly justified I think on balance to uh, promote global health in this very crucial way through subjecting uh, willing volunteers in within fully informed consent to that risk on a on a maybe more practical level, when you look at the degree of vaccine skepticism that exists in the world right now, I mean, in the hands of a critic or, or a doubter, if, if something were to go seriously wrong, what do you think about the potential harm there to, to, the, to vaccine science and, and to the confidence in vaccines? Mm -hmm. uh, we don't know what would um move vaccine skeptics, I say, let's do the right thing. Let's make it very visible that we're seeking informed consent. Some colleagues of our, and I have conducted the only survey I know around the world um, in six different countries with thousands and thousands of participants around people's willingness to um, tolerate challenge trials. And the answer so far is that around the world, uh, there is overwhelming support for conducting challenge trials in the wider public. So some of the worry about the public's response, I think is based on more speculation than about the empirical evidence. Better do the right thing, explain it, communicate it very well to the public with public health communications expertise and um, hope that this would uh, work. All right, Professor Al, it's been very good to talk to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Now, as you heard, human challenge trials rely on volunteers. The same organization, One Day Sooner, pushing for challenge trials. It's also collected more than 34,000 signatures from 150-some countries, all potential volunteers to take part and extend an arm for science. We want to hear from some of them. My name is Connor. I'm 27 years old. I'm a library technician, and I live in Kelowna. Hi, my name is Wendy Kwong. I'm 51 years old and I work as a dentist in Vancouver. My name is Dane Stewart. I'm 29 years old, and I'm currently living in the town of Truro in Nova Scotia. I expressed interest in the Human Challenge trial because I think the risks to me are far away by the potential gains to everybody. I think it boils down to whether we take calculated risks and accelerate the, the development of the vaccine. There's also this, this sense and I think a lot of people can relate to it, this, this sense of a, a loss of control right now. Being able to participate in a human challenge trial that felt like a tangible way that I, as just an ordinary citizen, might be able to contribute meaningfully. There are about 5,000 people dying per day from coronavirus right now, and none of those people were able to consent to that risk. I'd much rather that me and a few other volunteers with informed consent take on that risk so some of those people don't have to die in the future. When you see that volunteers from other countries are being tested for a vaccine that we may end up benefiting from, I think that it is only right um, that I contribute to this international effort.